Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Flow Show. Just uh, me on my Todd this morning because uh, Kay's got a dentist appointment. Um, hopefully, nothing that too bad going on there. But uh, these things happen as you get older. So, just me and my lovely lonesome today with all you boys and girls here. Right, let's get cracking straight into it then. Lots to talk about. Uh, as we have done since uh, September kicked off. It's been a busy one. Um, we are firmly on JPY Intervention Watch. Um, so I'll leave all those bits and pieces uh, until after the, the rest of the headlines. I'm going to kick off in uh, the Eurozone. Um, there's been a bit of data out this morning. Um, Eurozone, oh, what's going on now? I'm in the wrong thing. Look at that. Oh, how do I get back to this? Clear it all, refresh it. Might have to skip it. All the countries have gone. There we go. Back to normal. Oh, two seconds. There we go. All right, hopefully that to be all right. So back on track. Um, yeah, we've had a bit of data out uh, this morning. Um, and today, retail sales from the Eurozone uh, coming in a little soft at down 0.2, um, as expected, though. Um, well, this Canada had minus 0.1, others had minus 0.2. So there were thereabouts, uh, confirming a little dip in retail sales there year on year. Not as bad as expected, down 1% versus 1.2% uh, matching the prior month as well. Um, we've had a little bit of uh, other minor data, let's call it that, uh, PMIs from the construction sector in Europe as well, still looking a bit soft. A um, couple improved or one improved Germany, 41.5, massively up from the 41 prior, uh, but all still in contraction. Um, the UK doing a bit better though, um, better than expected anyway, 50.8 versus 50.5 expected, um, still below the 51.7, so a dip on last month. Anyway, um, some GDP data you can see there from um, Australia, all pretty much in line, um, year on year number up a bit more than expected, a bit better on the quarter, um, nothing that's uh, majorly stand out from those numbers. Um, so over to uh, some of the speakers, uh, ECB's Visco says we must be careful on the future policy path. Uh, we've got a few Members uh, on both sides of the uh, Dove Hedge scale going off recently, Centino, uh, as we saw yesterday. Uh, a couple more hawkish uh, today and a couple still sitting on the fence. ECB's Nagel, the German, um, obviously talking strongly yesterday, said today, um, overnight, we still haven't reached the target on inflation and it's wrong to bet on fast cuts after peak rates have been reached. Um, is currently not worried about a wage price spiral, which means we should all be worried about a wage price spiral. Uh, ECB's Vilroy repeated that uh, we are very near or at uh, a peak regarding interest rates. Obviously, we are near or very near the peak regarding interest rates. The duration of high ECB rates is more important than hikes. Um, ECB's not dropped a little hawkish uh, nudge, saying that markets may underestimate a September hike chance. Um, and I'm actually on his side, um, depending on how inflation plays out. Um, I think uh, the chances of an ECB hike in September are probably higher than the markets expected at the moment. Um, very much uh, still the Bank of England, the only bank expected to hike in September, um, all the rest expected to stay unchanged. But I think the risk for the ECB and uh, particularly for the Fed are higher than the, the markets making out. Um, over in the US and one of the uh, moderate hawks, let's call him that, um, said that recent data will allow the Fed to proceed carefully. Um, recent data gives the Fed space before making the next rate decision. So effectively signaling that uh, he's happy with a pause at the next meeting. Um, the jobs market is starting to soften. Uh, it's not surprising that the unemployment rate has ticked up. The data is looking good for a soft landing scenario. If inflation keeps coming down, um, the economy is in a pretty good condition. Um, the data will drive whether the Fed lifts rates again. 
One more hike is unlikely to send the economy into recession, nor would it damage the jobs market. Um, until inflation comes down, the Fed will have to keep rates up and Treasury yields are probably about where they should be. Um, now, this guy back in June, July, he was uh, favouring two more hikes, um, one of which we got and uh, favoured one uh, sometime over the course of the rest of the year. So he's in a bit of a pause mode, but uh, he's still siding with uh, the possibility of another hike to come. Uh, Fed's Mester, on the other hand, um, says that we may have to go a bit higher because the cost of undershooting in monetary policy at the moment is still higher. So staying on the hawkish fence there, not putting any uh, details on September, uh, but still saying that uh, rate hikes are firmly on the table. Um, US factory orders out yesterday in durable goods revision. Uh, again, not too much to write home about. A little better than expected coming in at uh, only negative 2.1 versus uh, negative 2.5 expected. Still a negative. Um, strip out uh, transport stuff and things were a bit better. 0.8% there, uh, higher than the prior number. Durables, um, no real change to those. Uh, that big number that moved it uh, this month, uh, the defence number, excluding defence, um, came in a bit worse, minus 5.5 versus the flash 5.4. Um, durables overall uh, were largely unchanged. Um, right, let's get uh, stuck in to the intervention talk. Um, that's what uh, is top of mind this morning. Um, so the big move this morning really has been from the top currency diplomat, Kanda. Um, he has now been speaking about seeing speculative moves in FX. Um, then he added the usual lines, won't rule out any options if moves continue. Watching with a high sense of urgency, FX moves should reflect fundamentals. What is significant about this is that um, the jaw boning has he's stepped that right up. Usually you get all this watching with a sense of urgency, reflecting fundamentals, blah, blah, blah. You get a few days, a couple of weeks of that. If the moves don't stop, then you get them stepping up into, you know, speculation and that sort of thing. And also talking about volatility. Um, so it is a bit of a strange one to find that he's stepping up to speculative moves. Um, we have heard from from other members uh, and BOJ people um, saying that uh, the moves in the dollar are driven by things happening in the US, so on and so forth. Um, so it's not been all one sided in, in their view. Um, but for me, it is a big step up the levels. It's, it's We're pretty much one step from intervention now um, in terms of the playbook that goes on. What we haven't got right now is the volatility. Um, that is one thing that they're on watch for. You know, this here, moving up, uh, you know, taking two, three days to move up uh, a couple hundred pips, you know, that's not really in the intervention zone. Doing two, 300 pips a session a day, that is something that we need to be aware of. You know, that's the type of moves we were getting back when they intervened last time towards the latter part of 2022. Um, so when we were moving pretty swiftly, you know, 10th of August to September, you know, up a good five, 600 pips. Um, then we got the intervention. Then we jumped another five, 600 pips up towards those highs. Then we got more intervention. So we're not getting the volatility um, here that we did back then. So it's a bit strange for them to uh, be coming up with such strong language this early, um, which... In my opinion, it could suggest that they're more worried about the level of the yen this time around rather than the volatility aspect of it. So if they do intervene um, while things aren't that volatile, that would pretty much nail on the head that uh, they're looking at the level of the yen more than the volatility side of things, which will be a little bit of a change to how they do things normally. Um, but it's their, it's their game. They make the rules and uh, they can push the buttons as and when they like. We can only go on what happened previously. Um, now, we have had other members out. Um, Japanese uh, Chief Cabinet Secretary Matsuno, um, he came out with the usual lines where we might expect uh, watching FX moves with a high sense of urgency. 
important for FX to move, stay reflecting the fundamentals. We'll respond appropriately to FX moves if necessary without ruling out any options. So he wasn't uh, as strong as Canda in terms of respective notes, um, but that's the one that's really swung it for me this morning. Um, now, what uh, Matsuma did also speak about is that they are watching international energy prices with a sense of urgency. Um, sounds like they want to intervene in uh, oil markets as well, but obviously they can't. Um, and they're going to they are to call on oil producers for steps to stabilize the market. Um, now, this has come after the Saudis and Russia agreed to extend output cuts for another three months. Um, well, a bit of a caveat on that. Caveat on that. They said uh, they're going to extend uh, for three months, but they're going to review it every month. So it's basically a one month extension with a review after each month. Um, that uh, saw oil have its little pop yesterday, as you can see there. But moving back to Japan, we know that they are already looking to extend subsidies for oil uh, and gasoline prices over there um, because of the moves up in oil. So that's going to continue. Um, and it also reminds us that they are still doing a lot of fiscal measures over there um, with regards to keeping prices contained or the wrong type of price moves contained. Um, so there's plenty of easing going on, on the fiscal side. Um, and uh, they are also going to be uh, forming or formulating their next economic measures in October, uh, which aims to support wage increases and household finances. That was according to Kyodo last night. So it's a bit of a double edged sword for those guys over there. Um, they're continuing to ease on the fiscal side. They're continuing to ease on the monetary policy side. Um, and they're wondering why the currency is uh, weakening further. Um, What's different this time about potential intervention and, and the moves we're seeing is that they're not getting the help from the other side. When they intervened last year, um, they got a bit of help because we pretty much got to peak rate expectations for the Fed. Um, you know, you do remember coming into uh, 2023, we had the, the pivoters uh, all trying to play a, a turn in the Fed rate expectations had reached their crescendo back in that period because we had seen a few months of inflation coming down and it really started stepping down um, at the beginning of the year. So the market changed its expectations on the Fed. The fundamentals changed in the US. That got them a lot of this part of this move because they only intervened twice up here. And the rest of it was down to the fundamentals. So this time it's different because... We're not in a rate hike cycle We're at the end of the rate hike cycle, but the moves are a bit similar because the dollar is still strengthening because the US is the less dirty shirt in the basket at the moment. And that's where investors are beginning to park their money. Um, if the Eurozone economy is going to suffer, UK, elsewhere, and the US is uh, going to come out uh, less uh, hit by that, then that's where investors want to put their money. So that's why we're seeing Dolly in also gaining as well. So it's a different situation to back then, but some of the moves are similar. As I said, we haven't got the volatility though. Um, that will be the final piece in the puzzle. Now, what you have to remember with intervention is that they are not here to put a brick wall in the way. They're not here to say, we're gonna defend 148 and the price isn't gonna go through it. Uh, if they intervene, they'll knock the market. It will hit it for four, 500 pips. Um, then they'll take their foot off the gas and the market will do its thing. What we have to see is whether the market takes the hint and decides, no, nope, we're not going to push this any further. That's when you get a, a top in play. But as we said, we had an intervention in September and then we went another five, 600 pips after. So we have to watch out if we do get intervention, what happens? Does it mark a top um, and every time we get up there, we find resistance coming in or do we return pretty quickly and move above that intervention level, which will mean they could be forced to intervene again. That's what's going to make it difficult to trade this. If you want to try and front run intervention, you've got to remember as much as they've stepped up uh, the jaw boning, they can still jaw bone for another two weeks before they intervene. That could mean this goes up to, to back to those highs, 150s, 151s, 152s. 
before they intervene. It all depends on when and where they want to do it. So don't think jumping in here now, just because we've had a step up in intervention talk, means that that's going to be a top. You might find yourself two, 300 pips offside before they even get to intervening. So it's dangerous to, to try and front run it. It's also going to be dangerous if you're long yen pairs. If you're long dollar yen and riding this nicely, well done. But think about the increased risk now. If they do jump in and intervene, you're going to get hammered for four or 500 pips. Um, you need to have your stops in play, maybe tighten them up behind. Um, you still are at risk for, for your stops being filled at a worse level, depending on how the market reacts to that. If there's any gaps or anything like that, you might get filled at a worse level. So if you're long, you've got to be careful. Now, if you happen to be short and you, you're catching intervention, <clears throat> then all well and good. Don't look that gift horse in the mouth. Um, if suddenly you see this drop two, three, four hundred pips, even if it's not intervention, even if it's just a, a rumour or a murmur in the market and uh, we get a bit of jumpiness. Think of that. You've had two, three hundred pips in the space of seconds. Take some money off the table. Put it in the bank. If you want to stay in, keep some of the position, feel free to do so. But don't look the gift horse in the mouth. Um, it's not often you get a, an instant two, three, four hundred pip move in your favour. Um, so take some money off the table. Um, that, I think, is it uh, from most of the headlines uh, today. Um, so we'll just uh, continue to look at prices and just answer a couple of your questions uh, we already put up. Michael's asking, what can they do to stabilise prices when Saudis and Russia cuts? Are you talking about uh, the Jap Japanese <coughs> stabilising prices? If you're talking about their energy prices, um, they've been offering subsidies. Um, so as the gasoline prices, which I think a week or so ago hit 15 years highs, um, they basically just suppress the price by paying the difference, if you like. Um, that's what's happening. So that's how they can stabilise prices. Um, but how long that lasts is anyone's guess. The more money they throw at it, the bigger they will have to borrow, the more pressure it puts on government finances, which has already been under pressure since COVID and everything that's uh, gone on in the last few years. Um, the question will be, how long do Russia and the Saudis keep this going for? Because um, the problem they face, um, and if you take just the manufacturing sector as a guide and the, the weakness we've seen throughout, you've got to think that the demand isn't there. So it's okay cutting production, but you still not got the demand there. So it's a, I don't know how you want to call it, it's, it's an ever-decreasing circle. You know, it's, it's one thing when demand is 20 barrels a day uh, and you put a cut in the five million barrels per day, you know, that's a big thing. But when, if demand, for example, is two million barrels a day and you're cutting one million barrels a day, um, it's a bigger cut, yes, but you, you, you're not fixing the demand problem. Um, what you really want is the demand to be there as well. And that's why um, oil prices have been a bit depressed. Manufacturing has, has been depressed, as we've seen. That's not good for oil generally. So it's all like we're... we're they're trying to stabilise markets or trying to fit the price, but overall activity is lower um, because the demand just isn't catching up. Um, so it's it's doesn't doesn't mean oil can't move up to 100 bucks, uh, but if people still aren't buying it, people still aren't buying it. It's not going to help them either way. It's not going to help their finances if they're only uh, if they're not selling as much as they were two years ago. Um, so it's it has limited impact on all sides in the in the financial aspect um but who knows where they want to take the price to you know it's it's been just as much in their favor to keep prices low to stop inflation kicking off uh, around the world because that impacts demand um, activity so it's all all these things are finally balanced they're all interconnected um you know what they do in oil affects what happens in manufacturing keep prices low then maybe manufacturing has a chance to pick up. You start ramping up oil prices, um, it's going to probably affect manufacturing even more, make things more expensive, put more pressure on activity and prices. So it all, it all plays into one another, all these uh, moves in commodities. Um, the other thing you've got to watch for, going, just going back to the intervention talk, is obviously 
that's going to be concentrated in yen pairs, but don't ignore the pull that it can have on other pairs. If you suddenly see dollar yen coming down significantly, euro yen, all the yen pairs, it's going to have a bit of a drag on their, their majors as well. Um, so just be careful. It can throw out some funky moves. Um, you can also see whether they diversify their intervention into other currencies. Um, it can be a bit of a trigger event from other people. You know, suddenly models are now moving on because suddenly prices have changed. So it's all, again, it's all interconnected. It can all lead to moves in other pairs as well. So keep an eye on what the market wants to do with the majors if we get intervention from those. Right, if you have any uh, questions uh, on intervention, um, whatever, throw them up in the, the chat there and we'll go over it. Um, Gary, looking at oil, 80, 90, 88, 90s could be a tough nut. Yeah, it's, I've got, we've got these levels up here, a bit of a, a zone, if you like, 92s, 93s, 94s. Um, Probably could draw a bit of level there right bang on the 90. So I agree with that. Um, it's been the break really of this, this 82s, 83s area that's been the significant one. Um, if we get a retest of that properly, that will indicate whether these moves are going to last. So we've had a nice little headline pop. Um, it has pulled back a bit uh, in since then, um, as you can see. We've got a, a subsequent line coming in just around the 84s, 85s. So it's holding the break for now. Um, but as you say, where it's going to gain to is another matter. Um, 90s, yeah, I agree with you on that one. And then, uh, as I say, 93s, 94s uh, up here is going to be probably a, a decent technical area to look at that. Um, what was I coming on to? Okay, so yeah, if you've got any other questions uh, on intervention or anything else at all, throw them in the comments there and we'll chew them over. Um, what we also need to look at is the Bank of Canada today, uh, which could be a very interesting meeting. Um, again, another one where expectations are set pretty low um, going into it in terms of uh, probabilities, what hike or whatever. Um, I'm just calling those up. So bear with me one second. Let's see what the latest numbers are for those. Uh, so what are we expecting? So 86% chance of keeping rates unchanged at this meeting um, versus 14% of hiking them by 25 pips. So low expectations going in. Uh, what do we know thus far? The jobs market has been okay. Um, GDP has been a little bit soft. Inflation took a jump up in the last reading. Um, so there's probably enough in the pipeline for them to stay unchanged. So it may not be the announcement we need to worry about, but the comments after um, in the statement um, that comes with it as to whether they have any changes regarding what they see from the late last data that they've had, including that inflation. I think the inflation is the important one. The BOC uh, mandate is an inflation target of between one and three percent. So we're above that, we were below it or in it um, last month, and then we moved above it again on the last reading. Um, the core number is still above it. So they've always kept the door open for further hikes. So we need to see is, does this data change that um, or enhance that, make them more hawkish to suggest another hike might be needed, or are they gonna brush that under the table and say it's a one-off move up in inflation and then uh, they're happy to stay on pause. Um, for the price, again, we've had this big level here, 136.50, and it's it's still undecided what it wants to do. Um, we've had the move above, couldn't hold it down below. Then we had a, we've had another move. It's trying to hold it this morning. Um, still not out the woods. I want to see a decent period of time where it holds this level, or pushes up and maybe holds these highs. Um, so we get a move up to 36.80, 37. Any dips are limited to these two highs here. And that would suggest we have made a step up from that 136.50. That should solidify as support. Um, but being obviously this close to the BOC, <clears throat> um, you can't really 
worry about these small levels or these levels this close to the price. You know, if we get a hawkish BOC, we could be down at 135s. If we get a dovish BOC, we could be up through 137. Um, so for me, it's going to be about where we're at at the end of the meeting and what the price action does from there. I'm still long this, still happy to stay long. No reason to uh, worry about that side of things. I've got enough margin in the trade to, to play around with it. Um, given what the dollar's doing at the moment, if we do get a hawkish BOC and we see a move down to 135s, I might think about picking it up, adding back to my long position, uh, giving it a go to see if we then return back to the highs. Um, now, this has remained elevated even with oil going higher. So it tells you what we're what it's trading, what the CAD's trading at the moment. It's still not taking too much attention um, from oil. We saw a little dip yesterday on when the headlines came out, um, but nothing that significantly changed anything. And we went back to the highs thereafter. So oil correlation is in the off switch at the moment for this one. Just looking at a couple of the other CAD pairs, um, Euro CAD being one, because um, I've noticed we are mooching around this magic 46 and a half line again. Um, for those that may not have seen this before, this is one of those doozy lines that's been uh, in play for a long, long time. Always seems to have a bit of price action around it when we're there. Um, going back uh, into 2022 last year, you can see it was a very, very solid resistance point, you know, multi-month resistance point. Um, it's been a bit uh, on and off over this year. You know, we've had it as uh, when it broke, it broke, then we mooched around, then we sort of held a bit of support against it, then we had resistance again. So it's been a bit up and down. So there's always something happening here. Again, how we finish this one after the BOC could be important. If we're below it and holding below it, then potentially we're going to get some further downside. Um, then you can look at uh, maybe a move down to the 38.2 fib again which has also been a pretty solid area of support. Um, conversely, on the other side, if we get something that's uh, super dovish, we're probably going to get a move up, going to look around these 48s, 49s, maybe we get a push to the highs and then we'll see how we do there. This one can be a good range player. Uh, and when the levels hold, um, you know, you can get a good trade out of it. For those who have been following the show for a long while, know that uh, in our chat room, we were all playing this one last year playing off the support but setting up for the break and when it broke it went very well and uh you know you'll have some decent trades out of that one so when this one plays technically when it plays nice it can give you some good, good money wait for the decent levels though we've got a good range here to potentially trade um ali what are you up to today mate always got your finger in a pie somewhere haven't you um, your long euro dollar at 107.26, stop loss uh, below the figure, take profit at 56. Yeah, bit of a bit of a missed one, this one. I was eyeing up for that uh, 107 area for a, a possible long. Um, I didn't know, so can't do anything about that. It has held. It was a decent level. That's why I've got it uh, a thick red line, because it's one of those... Uh, decent levels more so than others um can't really see it in there but if you go something like a four hour chart which i might as well do while i'm here i'm in control uh, again you can see it's another one of these levels that has a lot of action around it usually if you've been away for some time and you come back to it it tends to have a bit of a reaction um, sometimes it a bit weak as you can see here we had a test here couldn't get higher than uh you know, 50s, 60s, before we had a breakdown, then we had a mooch. Um, when it does move away from it, then you get some good pips out of it. So here we've had a, a first test yesterday, but again, it's not looking overly strong at the moment. The bounce, pretty limited, you know, you're talking uh, 40 odd pips bounce so far, not managing to sustain it. So as far as your long goes, Ali, I think, uh, you know, we've, we've seen a little bit of supportive action here. We had the low, we stepped up from the low, we're trying to step up again um, from the second low. So the steps are working, but you now know your level, 107 and a half. You need to get above there. If you can't get above there, well, then maybe we're going to have another test of that 107 and we'll see what happens. But get above uh, this 107, 45, 50, then you're probably going to get uh, your profit target uh, 
And again, you know, if you get a break there, maybe you don't take all your money off the table. Um, take a, a good chunk off, leave a little bit on, see if it goes a bit higher, see if you can squeeze a bit more out of the trade. Um, but as you know, I can't tell you how to trade. That's that's how I would play it. I don't like to give up uh, a winning trade. I like to stay in as long as possible. Um, you can protect your risk. Okay, if you get stopped at, then uh, maybe you haven't made as much. Um, you give a bit back, but if you get a break there, then you know you can pull your stop well into profit above entry, and you've locked in the, the latter part of the risk there. And uh, just see if you get do get a further move. You might get 108s if you're lucky, um, and then you put a bit more in the pot uh, than you wanted to. Um, so good luck for that one. Um, you're hoping for a soft ISM today. Well, as you know, we don't do hope in trading. Um, you're in your trade. There's nothing you can do about it now. Uh, unless you want to get out, of course, before the data. So it's up to you. What do you want to do? If you're in the money going into the data, again, do you want to take some off the table? Um, doesn't matter if you don't make as much as you set out to do. As long as you make money, you're never going to go broke if you make your money. You have to judge the risk going into that data today. Do you want to gamble what you've got on the table or gamble not as much? And, uh, you know, because if you're wrong, you end up making nothing or even losing money. So I'd rather make a, have a small win than a big loss any day of the week. So, uh, yeah, plan to get out with some uh, before the data. Good man. And, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure, Ali. Um, just saying... You want to say thanks to uh, Kay and I because you give us a uh, little hour free and give us your years of years experience. Um, that's why we're here. You know, there's plenty of other sites who will sit there and give you trade ideas and tell you they think this and they think that. And, uh, you know, they don't care what the results are because they've got no skin in the game. Um, we're different here at Forex Analytics. I trade, K trades, Blake trades, still trades. We all trade. We all trade our own money. So, what we give you is really from what we're doing. Um, and then we're not here to be a signal service. We're here to show you this is how traders trade. This is how you should trade. And it doesn't matter what my opinion is of a pair or currency. It doesn't matter what Blake's, K's or anyone's. Our opinions can all be different. But what is all the same is how we approach trades. My approach is the same as Blake's, the same as K's, the same as Stelius. Manage risk. Make sure I don't lose money if I can avoid it and make sure I try and make as much money as possible when I get them right. So that's the part we always try and teach. It's not whether we're going to make money on intervention today from the BOJ MOF. It's what you do to get in and out of those trades if you want to trade it. That's the experience we try and share here. So I hope it's uh, doing you guys well. <clears throat> Um, so just looking at uh, some of the other data that we do have coming out, uh, as mentioned, the ISM, um, that's expected. Let's get it up on the screen so you can have a little look. Um, now, I've, I've seen a few comments or people are sort of brushing this one under the table in terms of impact uh, for the dollar um, and the Fed, um, but I'm not so sure. Um, as you can see, they're expected to come in at 52.5. So a little bit of a loss over last month. That'd be no big deal if that happens. Um, but it's the components that are going to be interesting. Um, obviously, employment, we're just above the contraction line. So if that moves below, um, that's going to have the market thinking that, yeah, maybe uh, the worm has turned in the jobs market and uh, we're going to start to see further weakness coming in there. Obviously, the price is paid number, that inflationary number, which I think went up last month. Um, it had been coming down, but it went up. Um, so, again, look at that one. If we get another upside print, so if we get lower unemployment, higher inflation, that's going to uh, be a bit of a conundrum for the Fed. Um, but, as I say, a lot of the, a lot of people I've been reading are, are sort of brushing this under the table in terms of impact today. Um Look for any big moves in these numbers. You know, if, if uh, you know this one comes in at 57.0 or 57.2, it's not going to have a big impact on things. Um, but if that, you know, business activity comes in at 40, then we're going to see some moves. So look at the look at the variation that we get today. That's going to indicate how much we're going to get uh, in terms of market moves and volatility there. 
Right, just going to have a look at uh, a couple of other pairs. <clears throat> so dollar largely, and we'll go back to dollar yen, dollar, yen, blah, 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 dollar largely bouncing back from any setbacks at the moment. Um, you know, we made these highs yesterday. We had that pullback. Um, pretty much came on the, the candle comments, um, gave the market a little bit of a shot in the arm to say uh, we're watching, don't go too far. We have bounced back strongly again. Not quite getting up to these highs, though. So the market may just have a few um, seeds of doubt sown in by Canada now. Um, so it could solidify this upside area, 147s up to 60s, 70s, 80s again. So just keep a look at that price action uh, at the moment. The market may want to th see what's coming next. Are we going to get more jaw boning? Um, is it going to be stronger or are we close to intervention? But still, volatility is still pretty low. Um, it's elevated compared to normal, but uh, not as it was when we when they intervened last time. So that's the last piece of the puzzle. This suddenly jumps up through 148, 148.50s, then we're in the zone, uh, in my opinion. Um, Dollar Max is on the break. Um, continued from what we saw last week when we got those uh, FX hedging comments uh, from Banksico pulling out of that. We've broken above the 1740, which is significant, as you can see there. I'll keep it on the short term frame. Um, <clears throat> this was the number. This was a break point. This was the point that got held. As you can see there, we had support. Decent bounce off support the first time. Another bounce off support again. Then we had the break, and that led to that resistance, resistance, and now we've had a break back up. So this is the significant move here. Um, and I know Blake's been running this one, so he's a, had a nice trade on there. Um, the signs had been there. We'd spoken about this before. It had stopped going down, which is always the first signal you want to see when trying to catch the knife. Um, but it really, it's really taken that move from Banksyco to, to give this one a shot in the arm. As you can see, we are starting to find a bit of support into this level. So if you weren't long here, if you're not long up here and you want to chase it or you want to get in because you think these moves are going to continue, you know where you want to do it. 1740 is your number. Um, you know, you might need to give it a bit of a couple hundred pips uh, because this one moves pretty quickly. Um, so if you get a test down here, retest and it holds, that'll give you further confirmation that uh, longs are the way forward. You don't need to give it a lot of room you know, tight below, you maybe stretch it 138, maybe even 135, depending on how deep your pockets are. Um, but if you're under this 1740, you know you're on the way to getting a hiding if you're long. So that's the way you want to play this one from now. Where can it go? <clears throat> this one can be a bit dangerous because there's a lot of carry people in here. Um, let's go on to a daily. Now, not a lot of those people are going to get tipped out this carry trade if they're in from the 20s, okay? This is still a little bit of a move. You know, just this leg, we've only just uh, getting up to the 38.2 fib of this move here, which was from, uh, where was it from? March this year. So this is one portion of this whole move. 38.2 fib of the whole move is up at 1873. So we've got a long way to go yet. So in terms of people thinking that the carry trade's over, it's probably way too early. All those who were jumping on the carry trade down here might be thinking a bit differently. So you could get a bit of an acceleration if we start breaking some of these fibs because all the latecomers to the party haven't got the margin in the trade and they won't want to be starting to lose it. So you could get a bit of an acceleration through these sort of areas from those. But unless we get to the 38.2 fib of those, of, of the bigger trend, the bigger carry traders probably aren't going to be overly worried just yet. Um, so from here, it's got plenty of room to the upside, most definitely. Um, but keep an eye on your fibs and your moving averages because they might be the guide as to whether trends are changing around. <clears throat> um, Angela, what have you got going on? Uh, very nice uh, Technical play in Euro Sterling this morning. What did you see from that one, Angela? Let us know. I'll have a little look. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's come uh, onto an hourly. See what that shows. 
Uh, what should I wait for, Angela? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what uh, what you're were looking at, Angela. We had uh, a move down yesterday, down towards that twenties area, which, as you know, has uh, been a bit of a level previously. So, no surprise to see it support showing up uh, round about there. It's not particularly a level I'll, I'll I'll look to trade. I'm still long from 85s down here. Um, but it's one of those levels, if you are coming back down again, you want it to hold because that gives you the protection above the 85 handle down here. Um, the bounce again through the 85.50. This is one of those funny little pivot levels. If you're above, it can hold. If you're below, it can hold. For me, the wider play is still 85, 86, 85, 87s. Um, we've been watching this for months and months now. It is still indicating that the trend is still coming down. You know, we had this move move lower. Let's just come out of it. We obviously had this, this big move lower this year, and now it's held. Um, so it's done what it needed to do. First test held, we had the bounce. Bounces have been limited, though. So, And then we got these lower highs. So it's suggesting that we're not, done with the, this trend and hence why and I know this is a repeat I still don't think this 85 is out of the woods um, until we start getting above particularly this 86 86 10 area um, you know we're still in a bit of a downtrend here and this this might be a resumption of it um, but this that's why this level is key and the more times we hold this level down 85s 84 80s um, then the greater the breakthrough is going to be if one happens. That's why I'm still running sell stops below this level here. Um, because if it does break, I think it's going to have some some decent legs. Um, and it's probably going to be down in the low uh, 84s in a flash, um, if not more than that. So just uh, be careful with this one. Um, let's see what Andrew's doing. Intraday setup. Okay, so just playing the range of the, the previous day. Yeah, very nice. Let's say if you want to short term this one, as I say, you've got plenty of levels you can lean against. Um, that into that 85.20 was showed up again, as mentioned. So how do you want to play it going on the upside? You know, you've got the move above 85.50. Can we take on 85.70 if you're still in it, Angela? You know, again, see if you can ride it as far as you can if, if you're not out already. You just exceed near the 61.8 retrace. Okay, fair enough. Money in the bank. You hear no complaints from me. <clears throat> um, Ali, uh, or let's start with Brian. I think, what's the thoughts of people thinking of 0 0.82? Um, for this one, it's, yeah, it's a distinct possibility. Um, the one thing with this one is it does range nicely. Um, you know, you can see decent enough range, 1,000 pips, give or take, to play in between. Um, you know, that's going all the way back 2016, even through Brexit and everything, you know, it's all stayed in a really pretty tight range. So it's it's a nice one to play. Can it get to 82? Of course, you know, maybe a break of uh, this 85 sees it down to 82s. Um, if we get back down towards these levels, um, these lows down here, I'm going to be thinking about taking on longs purely to play the range. Uh, which has been really solid, um, but see what the fundamentals are and see what central banks are doing, ECB, BOE at the time. But yeah, 82 is a possibility, but you ain't going to get 82 unless you can get through 85 first. Um, and he says to follow the good principle and not let the fear, hope and greed intervene your trading. It's tough if you are swimming upstream against human nature. There is nothing quite good or bad as trading they give you a number every day. Yeah, just going back to what I was saying. Um, it, it's it, human nature is all is very difficult. You have to fight it every day with trading. Um, we all fight human nature. You see a you see a market move two hundred pips. You think, oh, I'm uh, that's enough. I'm going to get on the other end of that. Um, it's human nature. There's a human nature to sell everything. There's always a sell bias, a negative bias in your head. Um, you know, you get far more people wanting to sell values than buy dips usually because that's human nature. Um, but other people, yeah, they give you numbers and they don't care. 
um, give you trades, give you trade ideas, and unless they've really got skin in the game, it doesn't mean anything to them. Um, but yeah, human nature is, is a part and parcel. Fear, greed, you know, getting a trade and wanting more than you, you really are obliged to maybe have access to, um, you know, buying Eurostone in 8520 and hoping for 88. You know, it's pie in the sky stuff. You've got to keep your, your, your expectations manageable. Fear, getting in a trade and it moving in your way and suddenly instead of waiting for your profit target, you're getting scared because you don't want to give back what you got. All these, all these emotions you have to deal with with trading, which is why having a plan at the start is important. Know what you want. Don't adjust your plan um, too significantly. You know, if you've got a plan to buy this at 85.20, and get out 85.70, that's fine. You shouldn't be panicking when it gets to 85.30 um, about what to do. What are you going to do? you in the money. Do you take profit? Your plan is 85.70. But what you do is you watch the levels and you say, right, well, my next level is 85.50. We've hit there. I'll take some money off. Because what happens if I don't get my 85.70? So that's when you can change a plan to your, to your advantage. Okay, because then fine, you've taken some money off the table. If you don't get your 85.70, you've made some money um, locking your stop, uh, bring your stop up behind it to entry, whatever. Then if you get your 85.70, great. You've, you've made your target. Maybe you haven't made as much because you've only made the, the extra 20 pips on half the trade. Doesn't matter. The win's the win. Your plan worked. You did it. You followed through and it worked to perfection. And that's all you can ask. Right, if there's no other questions uh, from you guys and girls uh, about anything today, um, we shall call that a day. I'll give you uh, just uh, a few more seconds to, to pop anything up. Um, we'll just have a quick look at cable. <clears throat> um, still holding above 125. Again, a lot of people marking this 125 zone uh, or level as something important to watch which it is, um, again, another level that uh, it's seen prior action. Don't forget, we've got the 124.50, uh, which is probably bigger than the uh, 125. This was that level that, uh, as you can see, goes all the way back uh, to the beginning of the year. Just level that showed up, 124.5, and we were knocking around it for months and months and months. When it broke, it was support. When it broke the other way, it was resistance. Um, so it's probably... If you're going to play off the 125, factor that in. It comes in around the 50 fib of this move up since March. So, um, or oh, 124.72 is a 50 fib, close enough uh, to 124.50. So keep that in mind as that might be the support zone bigger than the 125 for that. Right. If there's nothing else, we should call that a day. Uh, thank you very much for coming to the Flow Show and giving us your support. Don't forget to like us. Uh, on the socials, give us a thumbs up, give us a retweet uh, when we put out for the show. More people we get in here, the greater the conversation we have. Um, just missed out on uh, a couple of the questions in the Q&A. So just quickly before those, uh, Roberto, do you think the ECB hike will happen whilst German data is so poor? Yes, if inflation's going back up. That's, that's them. That's the ECB. They're all about the inflation. Yes, they will look at growth and... Um, activity but inflation is their mandate um, and that's what will drive them because they've been hiking even while the data has been uh, been uh, weakening uh peter b do you think trading stops can save losses yes use them all the time if i take money off the table get above a level or below a level that's gone my way then that's one of the first things i do bring my stops up if i've taken half the trade off bring my stops up protect the risk don't have to bring it all the way to entry you can just bring it into a position where your loss is zero so if you make 20 pips on your trade and your stop was at uh, 30 pips you can bring it up 10 pips on the other half and you're at break even um so yeah trading stops always good i'm running a trading stop in dollar cad um for my 131.50 longs and i'll just keep dragging it up and it always protects you and locks you in so yeah is the answer to that anyway that's it done dusted be careful over the BOC, um, be careful over the US data, trade well, make loads of pips, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot, everyone. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, 
share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.